And with us right now in the KBDI studios, Bob McElvain, who lost his son, Bobby. You go back to Ground Zero each year, do you not, Bob? Yeah, we, I am uh, part of a support group in Philadelphia, and uh, we've been together since day one after 9-11. And it, it, it is a big help because we just, we grieve together. And in, in grieving, going up to ground zero every year is very important to me. Not necessarily important to everyone, but it's just, to me, that's where my son is. He loved New York City. And for a lot of people, specifically in my support group, this is the burial ground of their children. And that's very difficult, you know, especially seeing the buildings up and... Uh, but it's just, actually, we're going up there to pay respect to the people who were lost there. And we're talking people that had nothing remaining. And you know, I had mentioned that earlier, the fact that how lucky I am. I mean, can you imagine me myself saying, I'm lucky, I lost my son, but the fact that I took him home and put him in a grave, while well, these people haven't even seen a part of him. That's tough. That really, really is difficult. And Thank you, Bob. We are going to give Bob the last word tonight as far as being a family member, somebody who has lived with this tragedy now for many, many years. And my question to you, Bob, isn't how do you do it, but what would you like to see happen now going forward? Well, I have my personal goals and I have uh, universal goals, sort of. My personal goal is I want to leave a legacy to my relatives. And that legacy is truth, what I think is the truth. And my universal goal is I, the world has to change. And until we start keeping these politicians accountable for what they do, and they have never been held accountable. And this to me is a landmark time because 3,000 people were murdered. They have given us a story. Maybe we've never been told the right history. Well, maybe it's about time we start learning history for what it is and concentrate on history. Why did we have the problems in the 80s? Why, you know, Vietnam, we know all these things. We know what governments do. And Somehow, some way, people have to understand to be, have a democracy, we have to participate. Maybe we have to get rid of the two-party system, make it a three-party, four-party, where we have more dialogue. We just have to have dialogue. And it just seems that everyone's trying to avoid this issue. And that's why, to me, 9-11 is such a big, big time issue, because this, is, this just has to happen. The truth has to come out. And Can I, I say that I am group. honored to have you on the program? Thank Bob you very much. came in from Philadelphia to be with us, and we want to say thank you. Thank, thank you, you very again much for, for everything me. you've done. Sherry? <laughs> well, I'm joined here. Yes, we've got to give a round of applause for Bob and, and everybody, all of our great guests. I'm joined by Director Ray Novoselsky. Uh, finally, pronouncing his name correctly, just took the whole event here. Ray, you've just been doing a fabulous job on air talking to us more about behind Thanks the scenes. Thanks so much for having us. You know, this is really a unique experience here in the United States. Unfortunately, it's unique. You know, uh, I wish it had happened more up until now, but thank you for, you know, being brave enough to kind of to play this movie and let the audience decide. Well, you know? that's what we're about here at KBDI, taking some risks. You guys have been so great to work with. And, and I, I was just wondering if, if Rebecca's talked to you about how this film changed your life. I mean, well, you know, before, I, before okay, after 9-11, I, uh, I was pretty much like everyone else for the first sort of year and a half to where, you know, I, I was really angry. I wanted to just get the terrorists. And then once sort of Bush went into Afghanistan, I figured that was pretty much wrapped up. And then, you know, one day, just as I was about to graduate film school, uh, my future co-producer John Duffy and I heard about this site. So a friend said, you know, uh, Paul Thompson, this guy Paul Thompson's got something called the complete 9-11 timeline. There's more to 9-11 than you think. Check it out. And we went and we ended up spending the entire night and into the morning just reading this website going, I can't believe all these things were reported in the mainstream media and I didn't know that. And it's only gotten worse since then. The amount of facts that are available now are... Uh, truly jaw-dropping and they don't paint a very good picture and what concerns me is that people think that because Obama is is in office now that um, sort of that's all taken care of but the thing is some of those bad apples left with the Bush administration but some of the people that messed up were in the CIA or NORAD or the FAA or FBI etc cetera, etc cetera. and those people have been promoted you know they have nobody's been fired and a lot of them you know are the ones still protecting us to this day and that scares me so um, 
So is your work going to continue along these lines, your independent film work? Well, we want to do uh, another uh, film called Footnote 44 that takes that actually does an original investigation, picks up where the 9-11 Commission uh, failed in many ways, and speak directly to the participants. It looks like there's been some wrongdoing, but we're going to give them a chance to basically tell us that that wasn't the case and why, mm -hmm. and explain, and maybe we can figure this whole thing out. But. You know, well, we, I like what you talk about, about the transparency and accountability, that it's, it's brave filmmaking. Thank and you. thanks so much. And, you know, you can pledge right now and receive a copy of this fine film with your pledge of support. You know, Ray, we were just talking about, um, what were you saying about if it's well, new information for people or, I, yeah, or open their eyes? If, if tonight opened anyone's eyes a little bit and, you, you know, you, you're going to start looking at this, this issue further, um, maybe you could do that same favor for someone else by you know, making a pledge and getting a copy and then giving that to just one person. If everybody basically out Pass there it passes it to one person and continues to share the info, um, that's really going to help us to get a new independent investigation and to see some actual accountability. We need pressure to Congress. Write your congressman, call your congressman, tell them that you care about this issue. You know? It's not over. It's just really the beginning. Unfortunately, yeah. It should have probably been taken care of years ago. It should have been taken care of right after 9-11, but decisions right. were made to not do that. And so well, we now is keep important. Fighting. You know, yeah. if we can keep it going now, it's about the now. And that, the environment really may be something. more friendly now uh, under this and administration. And maybe people are opening know? up. I think that this broadcast has shown that so many people out there, Scripps Howard reports that 36% of Americans have questions about 9-11 of what really happened. So a lot more people have asked questions. We hope that this has brought some information and and, and some, you know, more ahas in, into into your life, into your home right now with this broadcast. And I think that that's, a, a, you know, some people were even getting together so that they could pledge and get the items and to that's share great. them and yeah. again pass them on. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention or talk about Press for Truth. Um, you just can't believe how many people, and I'm talking worldwide. I remember when we first made it, I forget what, you know, it was a few years back. But my relatives, when I first mentioned something about 9-11, they all looked like at me, I was nuts. And there's a lot of information that we've given you. And it's really too much to take in. Well, Press for Truth sort of does that for you. Again, I've given it to my relatives. And they've looked at it, and the only thing that it did in the beginning is that they, they began to question. And that's all I would want out of this, is the fact that they just don't believe me. I mean, I do my own thing. You know, this is, for, this is for me. This is my transformation. But Press for Truth will just give you, uh, hopefully, those little things that you will say, geez, there is doubt about 9-11. And then maybe you will look into it. And the more people will look into it, the better this country will be, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you, and thanks to all of the great folks who have called in with their comments. Um, if you have other comments, you can log on to kbdi.org, click on Community, click on Viewer Buzz. Everybody who works here at the station reads those comments that come in via the email. And, you know, we're here for you. We're, thanks for acknowledging and noticing that, that we're really trying to do something different here at the KBDI studios. And what about the local groups? Thanks. Yes, the, well, the, we've got to thank the Colorado 9-11 Visibility Group. Thank you so much, Kyle. Let's give them a hand. Uh, Fran Schur, Earl Stalen have been on with us during these breaks right now. This group has helped us uh, bring these distinguished uh, guests uh, into the Colorado community. They're putting them up. They're shuffling them to the airport. Um, it's really because of them that we've, uh, that we've been able to bring this to you. So it looks like they're counting us out right now. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We thank couldn't you. have done it without thank you. Thank we you. appreciate thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your great work. And now joining me is a man who also searched for the truth, Paul Thompson, author of The Terror Timeline, which was the basis for the film you're watching. As the Village Voice newspaper puts it, Paul Thompson's timeline is based on public documentation of what we know. It almost has to be taken more seriously than the 9-11 Commission report because it's open. There's nothing secret here. Welcome, Paul Thompson. Thanks for having me. You know, after 9-11, I began running a, um, a, a, an email service to about a thousand people. And I would scour the world press on my own and get stories from outside the United States. One thing I noticed inside the United States, there was almost a feeling that if you asked questions, you were committing treason, that you were somehow disloyal. Did you run into this or did you see this levied on the, on the Jersey girls? 
Well, in fact, uh, after 9-11, there were several reporters who were fired for, uh, for saying critical things relating to 9-11. There was one reporter who criticized uh, what Bush did on that day, and he was fired the next day. So there was definitely a chill. Um, it, you know, it didn't affect me as just an Internet researcher, uh, or I don't think really the Jersey Girls, but um, I think that there generally just was a, a desire for revenge at that time. People wanted uh, very much to see uh, something happen as a result, an attack on Afghanistan. Um, and it wasn't a, a time for people to be wanting to ask questions. Anybody who did that, they kind of looked at you like, you know, what's wrong with you? So it's, it's something I think that continues to this day. It's a real reluctance to ask questions on this issue.